Hello, my name is Marcos Suedo. I'm the archive manager at New York Public Radio. We are an um, organization that uh, has a couple of public radio stations in the city of New York in the United States. And I'm very excited to be here. Um, I wish I could be there in Prague with you, having um, a start of ramen or a bro check, but uh, one of the wonderful beers there, but um, we're gonna have to talk about this instead. Sorry about that. All right, let's get started. Uh, we're gonna talk about probabilistic record linkage, which is a mouthful, but it actually is not as bad as it sounds. So some of the recent projects that we've been working on um, at the station are uh, the ones listed here, and they usually involve um, kind of merging two data sets. And we'll go through these um, in more detail. The common issues among all of these projects that are, we've been involved with are that we have two separate data sources, and there are no clear connections between these uh, data sources. And that Many times we've had to rely on text in order to infer certain connections. The workflow, generally speaking, is to parse out patterns, for example, words, um, and then from a, a source data set, and then try to find probable uh, matches in um, the destination data set. So uh, again, parse out patterns, generate pattern statistics. This is not strictly necessary, but it usually helps. And then match a source to a destination. Uh, and that may include, uh, of course, a list of potential matches and a confidence index maybe. And finally, uh, so far we have a human review the results. And this generates what we call ambits or, or spheres of assets that are connected. So we feel that this is useful. It also usually involves very large data sets or what we think of large data sets that kind of preclude the possibility of a human going through all of them. All right. So here's one of the first ones we did. We had uh, press releases that the station issued back in the 1980s for certain shows. In this case, it's one called uh, Senior Edition. And um, we had the database uh, on one side and these press releases on the other side. And sometimes the database didn't have a great description, but the press releases did. So it was in interesting to try to find connections between these two so we could um, import the data into our database. So what we did was because we had the date as ISO, we formatted it via XPath to a format that matched the press releases uh, once we OCR them. So we had the press releases scanned, we uh, converted them into text, and then we had a script go through them systematically to try to find a match for um, our database. And this was successful, as you can see, not 100% of the time, but many times it worked. And um, this allowed us to then um, take that uh, description from the press releases and incorporate it into uh, our data set. Here's uh, another uh, project that we're still working on, in fact. And this one was a, a different show called On the Line. We asked the producers to give us their uh, list of uh, guests. So the show usually was divided into several sections and each section would have at least one, uh, one guest. So, um, in this case, as you can see, there was a segment called International Coalition of Historic Science Museums of Conscience, and it included a reference to this person, Ruth J. Abram. 
and and then we have here well it also included what this person was which is in this case or back in 2000 was the president of a museum a local museum so then in this case the match was to the library of congress authority files we're interested in having authority files from the library of congress to um, facilitate discovery and what the what the um, script did was try to match it using the Library of Congress API to possible contributors using uh, these texts, basically. So you're going to say, okay, so far we haven't talked about probabilities at all. So why are we showing us this, Marcos? Well, okay, so there's a little detail here that I'm going to highlight, which is that we had four, it found four possible matches but one good match. One good match meant it's more probable. Why is it a better match? Because it includes the middle initial Ruth J. Abram. All the other matches do not include Ruth J. Abram. So the script says, okay, we found four pot potential matches or possible contributors, but one that is particularly good because it has Ruth J. Abram. And of course, all these, um, these documents include links to um, the Library of Congress, as well as descriptions in our database of these segments. This is to help the operator choose the right person. Here's another example from the same project, same kind of thing. Um, Mr. Edward T. O'Donnell back in 2002 spoke about hooligans, whiskey, and shenanigans, which sounds great. And um, there were several, in fact, 14 possible matches, but there were two good ones that included Edward T. O'Donnell. So, you know, this is pretty primitive um, probability matching, but you could see that this is um, something we were working towards. Here's another project where we took uh, web descriptions from a show that was recently terminated called. Um, um, uh, the takeaway, and it had um, very well described descriptions on the web. So there was a lot of published stuff. And um, in this case, we took those descriptions and parsed out the, um, ho the guests that were in that section. In this case, um, the way we did it was because in the HTML that was um, in the web description, the the ho the guests, excuse me, were usually either highlighted as strong, you know, like the tag strong or 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 bold, or they were um, used. Um, they included a hyperlink, so we use that those kind of cues to parse out the last name, and then we looked for files. We were interested in finding the raw interviews of those uh, guests. So, and that was potentially described in a file. And those are the file names, kind of. They're actually David titles. Uh, David is our, our internal database. So the connection was between the web and raw interviews that we may have in this folder that included a quarter of a million files. So we couldn't really go through through all of them uh, manually, but once we limited them, it was kind of easy, ended up being about a thousand plus that we chose from this um, very, very large set. We did it by matching the string, but also by limiting the potential matches to files that were created, um, I think within 10 days of the published date. So if something was published in 2014, December 19th, we only included files within 10 days previous to that publishing date, thinking that um, this is a radio station, we focus on news. So most of the time we have interviews that are you know timely. So we're interested in files that were that were um, related to that to that uh, or, or related to that published file in a recent uh, manner. Here's another example, and here's where we first find um, our uh, 
use of, of um, statistics in a way. We have two people in this case named Cedric Alexander and Elizabeth Alexander. And you'll see in red, this is still from the same project, we include the following warning. Attention, the term Alexander appears 85 times in this set. Choose carefully. Why do we include this? Well, it, I think it's pretty explanatory, self-explanatory, but um, in, the, in the destination folder, um, the files included the term Alexander 85 times. It's not many, many times among 250,000, but we wanted, we wanted the, um, the uh, user to kind of be the person who chooses which the, the files, the related files, to be aware that this is a fairly common term and to kind of pay extra attention to this. So this is our first time we started using um, descriptions, oh, sorry started using uh, statistics. Finally, uh, we have currently a project where we're trying to match newscast segments to raw footage. So on the upper left um, rectangle, you have, it, it's all within the same system, but there's two separate folders. One includes uh, segments that have been broadcast. Um, in, in fact, it includes clips that are used in segments that are part of newscasts. So the, the hierarchy is newscasts, segments, and then clips. And clips are usually kind of raw, um, not raw, but kind of uh, little snippets of audio that are used to kind of uh, make the, the newscast more likely. Um, so maybe there'll be a man on the street interview and they'll, they'll talk about a little bit of something. Um, we were interested in perhaps um, saving these uh, raw footage that was related to these snippets. So if we use like five seconds from uh, at, a, at a news segment, we were interested in finding the original recording that uh, the producers may have added, the journalists may have added to, um, to the system. So again, there was a folder of raw footage, there's a folder of newscast segments, and we're trying to connect them both. In this case, we didn't have a single uh, term or word, so we had to be a little more sophisticated. How did we do it? And again, this is still being developed, but this is what we're doing right now. Um, this is the kind of the chooser document we're gonna use, very similar to the one we used before, for uh, matching files with um, web descriptions. In this case, um, what we do is parse out the original file title, um, which in this case was this uh, news 20, blah, 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 gay marriage, Kruger 2. And we kind of parse out them in, and split it into words. And we, as you can see in blue, the um, it uses marriage and Kruger. Why not uh, the word gay? Because it has three, only three characters. So as a convention, we generally like uh, words that are four uh, characters or longer. And this is arbitrary, but this is what we have used. Um, and again, we, we, we're still tweaking it. So then you can see there's three potential matches, right? Three potential files. So one of them is, um, actually matched both words, marriage and Kruger, and um, the combined word frequency is 0 0.0162. So we multiply the frequency of each of those uh, terms and uh, kind of figure out how unlikely is it that this is by chance, um, if you will. And, um, you know, that's 0.0162%, so it's very, very small. It still could happen that that, and it does happen. In fact, that the things match by more than one word, and the combined word frequency is actually not that high, but it's actually unrelated. But it's unlikely. It's unlikely. It it's, it happens because the the set is so large, two hundred fifty thousand files, that it does happen. But um, this is kind of a, a guide. It's kind of a more sophisticated way of uh, of warning people, if you will. So, um, and then the other two just uh, match by the word marriage. We did a very similar thing. In fact, 
we limited the potential files to one week. And uh, this cuts down both um, both uh, processing power and, and time for the for the uh, person to review this. Um, so there you have. Um, in terms of what we've learned in these processes is I'm going to give some some general um, advice, I guess, that we that we have found useful, some tips that we have found useful. First is to really get to know your data sets, both sides, the source and the destination. Just kind of poke around and, and look at it and, and, and search and do database searches. Um, one thing that we found, for example, that didn't work is matching by authors. So because in the process that we have here, turns out, and this is number two, I'm, I'm going into number two already of the tips, but um, many times engineers will come in and edit something that uh, a person has entered um, in one file, uh, in one folder. And then, um, you know, start looking for possible connections and then also define what you want to find. Another thing that I, I didn't speak about this, but we wanted to only save files that are substantial. So we said anything less than five minutes, we're not gonna be interested in, uh, in terms of saving the file. And then kind of try to analyze yourself, how you do it manually, how you would match uh, a data set A with data set B, or like what fields would you use? How would you go for it? And then of course, start small, start with a subset and, um, and, and, and try it and, and try the script once you have developed it and see what uh, false positives and false negatives you get. And finally, of course, be aware of the limitations. Um, and again, I think at this point, we're only, uh, we're using this only with, um, with a human review, but it, of course it helps, uh, it cuts down on the time by, by a lot. Limitations, speaking of limitations is of course, one of the classic ones still happens every time is precision versus recall, meaning how many false positives are you willing to take versus how many false negatives you're willing to take. And this is, you know, a classic um, in our in our world. That's that's what we live with every day. In our case, we were limited by date, we limited uh, by length. So uh, by date, you know, we said seven days before the published date, say, but, you know, why not eight or why not five? So, you know, uh, these are things that you choose at one point. And uh, by length, we said, like I mentioned, five minutes, but we may be missing terrific files that are four minutes and, and 50 seconds by doing that. But um, again, it's, it's a balance, you know, a precision versus recall. The other limitation, of course, is misspellings. Um, I did that on purpose, yes. And um, because it uses string matching, um, misspellings are not um, caught. So if, especially with last names, if someone found out that the last name was different and they, they fixed it in the process, then um, we don't have that. And then the, the matching is non-semantic. So again, it's, it's just a string matching. Um, for future developments, and it is all related, we may want to have a bigger uh, source orbit, if you will. So um, instead of just having instead of just having um, the, the, as, as the words, the words from the title itself, we may have a second tier, if you will, uh, that includes the entire text of that uh, uh, newscast, in this case, where that clip was used, and then try to match with that. So kind of like a bigger Venn diagram um, uh, uh, matching. Another possibility is to allow for small distance spellings, meaning that if there's one only one uh, letter, one character difference between the matchups, that could be interpreted as okay, it's okay, and there's there's ways to do that. It's not that difficult. 
And then uh, more generally speaking, we may, uh, this is a goal that we have to have decreased operator roles. So maybe do things like, okay, we're pretty sure this is a match. So we're gonna check it for you unless you think, um, you know, still having an operator kind of be able to uncheck, but kind of have a limit Again, in that combination of of uh, uh, of likelihood, um, have an interval, uh, a confidence interval where above that we feel like, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna check it. But again, we're a little uncomfortable still not having um, an operator kind of review the results. That's it. Here's a list of uh, the staff at the uh, New York Public Radio Archives. Feel free to drop us a line and uh, we'll try to um, to uh, answer your question. And speaking of questions, I'm open to questions right now. Thank you very much. Any questions for Marcos? I'm almost sorry to ask, but have you thought about applying large language models into your uh, string matching to, to start adding some of that semantic context? Large language models into your uh, adding some of that semantic context. Okay, can you hear me? Um, I think the question was, have we thought about applying language models to our, our string matching? And um, the answer is that our, our corpuses, if you will, are pretty unique. So many times um, they don't, you could barely call them English. <laughs> So language models would probably not be uh, very useful. We're not, you know, opposed to doing it, but um, I think, um, you know, on on the one hand, the sets are large enough to not be uh, manageable by a person without some help, but on the other hand, um, it's easy to kind of create statistics about them and kind of create a corpus really uh, from them. So, um, but we might, we might, we might try to use language models that use our particular corpus. Um, we just haven't done that yet. And kind of create a corpus really uh, from them. Good, then thank you, Marcus. Give him an applause.